Welcome to the Orgasmic Lifestyle Podcast by Venus O'Hara. I'm here to welcome you into the world of orgasmic living by hosting experts to discuss orgasmic topics such as nutrition, spirituality, personal development, sexuality, and much more. Here, we will offer lifestyle lessons that can help you lead a fulfilling, joyous, and orgasmic lifestyle. I'm your guide, Venus O'Hara. Welcome to episode 87 of the Orgasmic Lifestyle Podcast with Venus O'Hara. In this new moon episode, we discuss vaginal confidence and vaginal rejuvenation. We speak with Lana Kerr, a women's wellness and intimacy expert. I also review the book, The Masculine in Relationship, by future podcast guest, G.S. Youngblood. The episode ends with a guided meditation with affirmations for vaginal confidence. But first, let me share with you my own journey with vaginal confidence. When I first discovered today's guest and I read vaginal rejuvenation, I was a little bit worried. I was wondering, is this the message I want to share? Because there are some negative connotations to that. Things like surgery or maybe not accepting your vagina in its natural state. But actually, when I delved deeper, I discovered some very interesting things about our guest today and what she is doing, her work. And I'm going to I'm going to save that for the interview. But in this segment, I wanted to share some of my own journey of my vaginal confidence and share just some um, some of my own reflections and experiences. And hopefully they will resonate with some of you. I think there's a lot of shame around the vagina, the vulva, and just the words we use around them. That's where it all starts, I think, this message or this deep message of shame that we receive throughout our whole lives. I have this theory that if you, um, I mean, I've seen so many children over the years when they talk about their body parts, they all, they, they have a, a word for the genitals, which is not the real world word. And I think that is already, and that word is often whispered. I remember a guy that I used to work with, they used to tell their daughter that it was called the Auntie Mary. I mean, seriously, I just think that's a really bad message to, to, to give to someone because if you get, a, a let's say, a class of five-year-olds and you ask them, what, what is the word you use for your genitals? I would, I would guess that they're going to say different words and those words are whispered and it's just, a, it's just something that you know from a very young age that it's a, a shameful area, you know? And I think I'm just using the correct word, which is vulva for the outside, vagina for the inside. Some people don't even know that. And it's incredible. Sometimes people refer to the vulva as the vagina, which is completely incorrect. But I wanted to share some of my own journey with vaginal confidence today. And um, I would say I have quite a lot of vaginal confidence. It's not always been that way. Um, I think it's something that I acquired and uh, I was taught as well um, some, but by some wonderful lovers. So I'm very, very grateful for that. But um, when I think about my vaginal discovery journey, I think back to when I was um, a virgin and um, I, when I started using tampons, that was a real eye opener. Because for me, before that point, when I learned about reproduction and the vagina, the vagina is like this big, it was like the secret garden. It had a lot of mystery around it. And when I had friends who were losing their virginity, they were always saying that it was painful. And I just thought, ow, this sounds like... And also when I'd, I'd experienced fingering when I was an adolescent, it wasn't, an, an, a, it wasn't exactly a pleasant occurrence, not at all. And um, so the vagina, um, it was like if a finger hurts, a penis is going to really hurt. <laughs> you know, that was what I was thinking. And it was really eye-opening for me the first time I ever used a tampon. It was very hard to get inside, a bit uncomfortable, this tiny little thing. And then when I pulled it out a few hours later, it had expanded. And I was thinking, I did not know there was this much space inside me. I thought it was so interesting. So I started using tampons from that point because I was just absolutely fascinated by my vagina and all this space that I had inside me, which I was completely unaware of. 
And then when I did lose my virginity, I probably shared on this uh, on this podcast. Um, it didn't um, hurt at all. It was over in about ten seconds, I think. And um, because that first incident um, incident didn't actually hurt me at all, um, the second time. I was very relaxed and I wasn't anticipating any pain. So I was so relaxed that, in fact, I just started to have vaginal orgasms all the time. I mean, orgasms that were uh, provoked by only vaginal stimulation, just from penetration. And it was just the most incredible um, feeling that I'd ever experienced in my entire life. Um, The pleasure was just, there were no words to describe it. It was my first time just experiencing something that was... I, it completely exceeded my expectations. I mean, I the, my motive for having sex at the particular time that I did was to feel an emotional closeness with my then first boyfriend, but it just um, became this absolute um, physical <laughs> ecstatic moment, which was obviously has uh, led me down this path of sexuality and wanting to share a message of pleasure. And uh, that's been my my big thing over over the years and I have been very um very fortunate that many of my of my lovers over the years have um been vagina lovers not all of them I have seen a difference <laughs> and um to be with a guy who is really into your vagina who wants to go down on you who loves the smell who loves the taste that for me is a massive massive turn on and especially if they're going down on you and they have an erection it's not just like a couple of licks to get you going you know uh, guys who are really really into it that's that for me it's it's a big turn on but it also makes me feel very relaxed and confident in my own body which is a wonderful wonder, wonderful thing so i know that so many people feel um you know very um unconfident about their bodies especially at that moment where you're taking your your underwear off and you're exposing your genitals, which is a very private area um, to someone. Um, and then not really knowing how to touch yourself, not knowing how to guide someone. It can be this moment of, you know, that's not pleasure to, pleasurable at all. It can it can actually provoke a lot of uh, discomfort and, uh, and shame. And um, yeah, shame about what you look like, what you smell like. Um, but when you've had um, lovers who are really into it and they are very expressive that that's just something that is absolutely wonderful i have had you know men that are not as into it and that's been quite disappointing <laughs> but i know it's what, what i would definitely choose as, as my preference anyway and then um and then later in life i think um when i was uh, starting to have sex i think i had a natural pubic hair then i kind of started doing a bit of a trim a bit of a kind of just a landing strip and then um when I came to Spain, I experimented with complete removal. And it was just actually, that was really a big eye opener for me. I know that people think that, um, that you're trying to kind of emulate porn stars by doing that, or but that, that, that's absolutely not true at all. I think some people who are against pubic hair removal um, haven't tried it and they don't really know like how sensual it can be and obviously pubic hair is there for a reason I don't think it's something to remove all the time because it can actually be very bad for you to you know do things like um, you know wax that you can get ingrowing hair which look, looks awful um, but from time to time it's kind of nice to to change it up I think that's my own personal preference and I do like that added sensitivity because sometimes um, oral sex can be just focused on the clitoral glands, whereas when there's no hair, it can be you can actually experiment more with those with the labia as well, which is also a very sensual area. And um, I don't know, I just I just like it personally, and um, yeah, I just think it's a nice thing to try. But um, but yeah, in, in general, I do have um, quite a lot of uh, vaginal confidence naturally. I've not had children, um, so I think um, for me, um, I, I think not having children obviously adds to the fact that I, I don't have, um, I haven't, you know, given birth or anything like that. But I do know lots, lots of people who've had, let's say, traumatic births, and they have completely disconnected from their from their vaginas and vulvas over the years, and they've ceased to see it as a center of pleasure and power and it's something that's um you know maybe something that's painful or traumatic instead so for that reason I don't really judge people who have who decide to 
um, indulge in some type of vaginal rejuvenation um, procedure because at the end of the day, you know, um, I'm, I, I prefer to kind of go about life in a natural way. I've not had any type of um, intervention to look younger. Um, I just kind of look after myself so much all the time um, that I, I think I do look younger than, than my years. But um, but I, I, for, the, for those people who have had, let's say, a traumatic birth or something that has led them down that path, I, w- I wouldn't judge them because I, they don't have that feeling of of the confidence and they're trying to get it back or if they ever had it at all. So so for that reason, I'm um, I'm a bit more open and uh, accepting of people who choose different paths than, than mine. And it's kind of always interesting to, to discover um, how people are, you know, connecting with this area, which is, you know, so, which is so shameful for so many people, but also it's a great source of power and pleasure. So that is my um, vaginal confidence story in a few minutes. But um, but yeah, I think it's really important to uh, to be connected to the vagina and the vulva and embrace it, you know, whatever state it's in, if it's if you're menstruating, if you're not, if you're lubricating, whatever it is, um, I think it's very important to um, just send it love, really. And I, sometimes I like to kind of cup my vulva and just really connect with it. And um, even you can even speak to your vulva <laughs> sometimes um, and even say, sorry, <laughs> sorry for the terrible lovers that I've chosen. Well, that, maybe that's a bit of a sidetrack, but um, but it's good to kind of connect with our our lady parts and um, and feel their power and the pleasure that they can give us because um, we need to kind of let go of the shame for sure. Anyway, let's find out more from today's guest. Are you ready to embark on a journey of self-discovery and inner peace? Join us at the award-winning Yo Barber Lounge in the French Pyrenees for a transformative, holistic self-love retreat from September 14th to the 19th. Immerse yourself in daily guided meditations, nature excursions, and powerful workshops designed to nurture your mind, body, and soul. Hosted by me, Venus O'Hara, this retreat is your chance to prioritize self-care, embrace your uniqueness, and build a foundation of self-love. Don't miss this opportunity to connect with like-minded individuals and elevate your life and enjoy a special welcome pack provided by Satisfier, the number one sexual wellness brand in the world. Visit yobarbalounge.com slash Venus for more information and to book your spot today. The link is also in the show notes below. That's yobarbalounge.com slash Venus. Now it's time for this episode's interview. We'll be speaking with Lana Kerr, a women's wellness and intimacy expert. Lana Kerr, welcome to the Orgasmic Lifestyle Podcast. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Thank you for taking part in this interview. For those who are unfamiliar with your work, could you tell us what you do? Thanks, Venus, for having me. Um, yes. So I have a I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Misc Skincare. We're the the home of CO2 lift carboxy gel, which is a carboxy gel treatment for the face, body, and the genitals. Okay. So is this for rejuvenation, I'm assuming? And why do we need to rejuvenate our genitals? Yes, it is for, it is for, well, reju- preserving, rejuvenating, you know, um, optimal functioning. CO2 carboxy has been likened to hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So we know that the benefit of blood flow and oxygen, um, how important that is for he- helping us to function optimally and looking optimally. Um, and that's what carboxy is. So although it has a long history, this is the first gel delivery system. And yes, our genitals age just like every other part of our body. And it has, as a result of aging, there's a consequence to that, which affects our quality of life. So yes, I think it's definitely important to think about taking care of this very very important area of our life. So is this actually the same product for the face as you would use for the genitals? Is it exactly the same? 
it's it's the same mechanism of action, different, slightly different formulation for mm-hmm. the female genitalia, especially. So we're talking about the vulva and then the vagina. The pH is important. So the pH okay. on O2 lift is 4 to 4.5, different from the face, but also to there's slightly other um, uh, an ingredient in there that's really addresses inflammatory issues down there. Okay. So what inspired you to follow this path? I've always had a passion for helping people to be their best selves. You know, my, even though my educational background is in accounting and finance, and mm-hmm. you know, went back to school, studied nutrition and had weight loss clinics. And we have through that, those clinics have helped, you know, upward of, you know, 20 to 30,000 individuals through our program. And, uh, you know, what, when people lose weight, they start to feel better about themselves. They start to want to care for their skin. And so we decided to open a, a med spa, a spa. And in looking for for something that was going to be as effective or as unique as our weight loss program is when we discovered carboxytherapy. We looked at it with injectable form and then we just did further research and we found a group of scientists in Japan that actually patented a delivery system through a gel to put carbon dioxide gas through a gel and we have the exclusive rights to that technology. Wow, so it was just an extension of wanting to help people feel better. Yes. And then, and then that starts, that started with the face and the body. And then like most things that I get passionate about it, when it affects me, you know, in a personal way, the, the vaginal, the vulva vaginal, when I got into my late forties, um, I started to experience a difference in the quality of intimacy and went to my gynecologist and, you know, she gave me an education on what happens with our vulva, what happens with our vagina, how it affects us in different ways. And her course, uh, she recommended laser, a laser for that area. And already, we already knew that CO2 lift has a is very similar to laser in the sense that laser or energy-based devices give controlled damage to the tissue so that the body can start a healing response. Carbon dioxide does the same thing. When you insert in the body, changes the concentration of the blood, the body automatically reacts by uh, giving a cascade of events that regenerate the tissue in that area that is applied. So that's what kind of led me in that direction. You know, before we launched, obviously we did clinicals. We were a big believer in clinical studies. One of our advisory board members is a cosmetic gynecologist. And we just talked about the idea. So we did a test, a pilot study to see which we have obviously expanded on that has been published. And we have another one that we just recently published, but one of the, the, we did a double blind and the individuals that did the ultrasound gel, the placebo showed no change in sexual function. The women that use the CO2 lift technology showed significant change in arousal, orgasm, lubrication, desire. And then this last one we did showed even improvement in bladder life. So helping with stress incontinence. And, uh, you know, and then I tried it myself and it was just, you kind of don't remember until you remember. Mm-hmm. And then, we, you know, we, we did the largest study we launched and, and we've since then helped thousands of women to really improve their quality of life. It's, it seems quite scary to think about having to use a laser in such a, you know, sensitive area. Um, so is, does this... Um, is this, for example, could this be considered a natural um, remedy for um, menopause? For example, were these women not taking HRT, for example? Well, I was on, before I experienced the difference, I was on bioidenticals. So I was okay. 47 at the time. I'm 50, I'm going to be 53, I'm going to be 54. But I um, I, uh, I was on um, bioidenticals. So yeah, no, that is, this treatment is hormone free. Okay. And it's, it's definitely something HRT I'm a big believer in. Mm. However, I it's still not addressing blood flow. It's still not addressing aging in the sense that your tissue is still getting thinner in your vaginal in your vaginal area. So you it, just like the skin under the eyes it's drier and brittle shows age first down there is the same thing so eventually if it's not treated that skin gets thinner drier you can lead to less lubrication and then eventually painful sex. Mm-hmm. So you can actually use it in, together with um, HRT or BHRT. 
Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And for those women who are not open to taking hormones, this is still a gr- this is a great solution because it's hormone free. But the the CO two lift V is addressing really two areas. It's addressing of sexuality or just health. And I'll and, and I will share with you some other information or stories that separate and apart from sexuality in terms of the the function of this area and how this can help. But you know, we talk about the vulva. Mm-hmm. And the vulva being our pleasure center, because that's where our clitoris is. And, and you know, um, it's, you know, I always think of the clitoris is nothing but an inverted penis, you know, mm-hmm. that has the sole function of pleasure. And just like a man wouldn't be having sex with a flaccid penis, so many of us are having sex with a flaccid clitoris because we don't allow it to get engorged with blood. But because circulation slows down, eventually takes longer and longer. In fact, some people we can actually shrink. So by doing the CO2 lift V, which by, by the way, Venus, just to let you know, CO2 lift carboxy can close a non-healing diabetic ulcer in as little as eight days. So mm-hmm. think about think about what is the issue with a diabetic circulation, blood flow. That's why they're very, very difficult to heal on their extremities. And if they, if we can close that wound with four treatments, eight days later, think about what it's doing for our vulva in terms of blood flow and circulation. So we encourage women to do a, a loading dose of five to 10 treatments within two weeks, and they will notice a huge difference in the quality of intimacy. But the second, because it's applied intravaginally, the, the, as we mentioned, that vaginal tissue, it will get thicker. Because the CO2 lift rebuilds the structure of that tissue so it becomes healthier. So you can lubricate naturally. You can, you know, you don't have the, you can cough and not pee. I mean, think those uh-huh. are some of the benefits that we're experiencing. Mm, interesting. So how many times would you have to apply this to reap the benefits? How often do you have to do this treatment? So once you do the loading dose, which is five to 10 treatments, and I'll explain what the treatment consists of. Once you do that, then you can maintain it by doing one CO2 lift V a month to maintain okay. it. So one treatment. So it's basically two packets. It's mixed together and that creates the CO2 gas. It's a gel that you, and it comes with an applicator. So you pull it up in the applicator, which it looks like you're applying a tampon and you mm-hmm. in, insert the gel inside the vagina, maybe two thirds of the gel goes inside. The last third goes on the vulva to the perineum okay. and leave it on for 45 minutes or just go to bed, wake mm-hmm. up in the morning and you sit on the toilet and the pee will, it will come out into the toilet. You can take the applicator and, and squirt the water to kind of let any gel wash out or not. You can just put on a panty liner and anything left will come out throughout the day and you're good to go. You, there's no downtime. You can have sex right away. And actually, most people notice a difference, them and their partner, within the first three treatments. Oh, wow. So how often would be a treatment? So you do it after you do the loading dose, which you want to try and do every day for five days or 10 days. So that's why I would say within two weeks, do the 10 treatments and then just monthly. Oh, that's great. OK, so it's a home, it's a home treatment. Yes, it's something you do in the privacy of your home. Oh, amazing. Yeah, because I actually was, a, I made it, I wrote an article of, uh, a couple of years ago about lubricants for uh, menopausal women and something that like shocked me or surprised me that was that there were lubricants just for maintenance. It wasn't even just for sex. It was just because it was uncomfortable to have a dry vagina. So that really opened my eyes. I don't think there's enough information out there about uh, what happens to your body during menopause. I know for me, I'm, I'm very natural in life. I'm, I mean, I don't even have painkillers or I'm, I'm kind of like turmeric and you know if I have anything or lemon you know <laughs> yes. I'm very witchy <laughs> I have all these different teas and remedies um but I do I do think from speaking to experts that I would definitely um be interested in the idea of BHRT because I wrote I read this book um called Sex for One by Betty Dodson and she talks about she was very natural as well but then she um said that she, um she kind of started some hormonal thing and then she became juicy again. I was like, wow, the way she described it was like, I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, the thing is, Venus, is that when I think of natural, I mean, this is a very natural way to put mm-hmm. the body in a position to regenerate itself. That's what by mm-hmm. putting all you're doing is, is giving it CO2. So the mm-hmm. science behind it is called the Bohr effect. Mm-hmm. And what that means is that when the concentration of 
CO2 changes in the bloodstream, the body, the, the affinity, the body has an affinity for CO2. So it will unload the oxygen in that area and pick up the CO2. And that when, in that process, it's going to, so we're oxygenating the tissue, and we're creating its, its, its vascularity, its, its vasodilation that's taking place. These are all great things to happen in a body. And mm-hmm. all to, to start that cascade of events is just introducing CO2, which is a natural element. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, I saw, um, can you explain what clitoral atrophy is and why it's important? Because I've heard of vaginal atrophy. And for those who are unfamiliar with that, could you tell us what that is? But never heard of clitoral atrophy and why is it important? Well, I mean, so the clitoris is, as we mentioned, you know, it's it's larger than what you see, that tip. Mm. It, it has legs. Yeah. And that area requires blood flow to stay full and healthy. Mm. And if it doesn't get it, it starts to shrink. So what happens in that, or atrophy? And so in that process, you lose feeling. You can lose feeling. It becomes less sensitive. Um, and that's because that's really the, the function of the clitoris, right? For pl- the only reason we have it and the only other function is for pleasure. So it's important. And there are other things you can do for blood. I mean, there's nitric oxide people. Do, I mean, there are different things people do to enhance, you know, blood flow. This is just another way that I feel is superior in in terms of re. Not only you're, are you bringing blood flow to the clitoris, but you're reconditioning vulva skin, okay. vulva vaginal skin. So that's really the superiority of doing something like this. So it's um, but yeah, I think that we as women we don't talk enough about the benefits of taking care of our vulva and our, and our clitoris and what role they play in terms of quality of life and enjoyment of life yeah especially within within a relationship there's massive impact because so i think um, one of yeah. my friends um who had a very successful sexual relationship with his wife when as soon as she got to menopause she's not interested anymore and she she just didn't even try to try and make it work so it was just shutting mm-hmm. it down completely and i think that has a massive impact on your intimate life so if your partner doesn't want it does that mean you should go without i mean it's a, it raises lots of Lots of questions. Oh, for sure. For sure. And to know that there are solutions to to reversing that, you know, that you can get into your 50s, 60s, 70s and still be vibrant and still have a, a, your libido still works. You still have desire and you still can fulfill that because there is a benefit to the body of having orgasms. Mm. So you by having sex, you're losing out on that avenue of improving your, you know, your, your health, your immune system, your stress, your creativity, all of that mm. can be affected by orgasm and the quality of them. So I just think that women should be aware that there are things out there that you can do for yourself that's going to give you that vitality and enrichment to life mm. as long as we live. Amazing. So can it affect your libido? So it was interesting um, when we did the study. So we did that double blind study, as I mentioned to you. And it I was it, it, what struck me was that the women that received the placebo showed no change in desire or arousal. Mm. Whereas women that got the CO2 lift V showed significant change in that because it's about blood flow, right? So it I think that. Yes, expecting sex to be comfortable and pleasurable definitely increases your desire. But I think that for us as women, you know, we so much of our, you know, enjoyment comes with our brain. I th- and you've heard mm-hmm. people say, you know, the brain is the biggest sex organ. Mm-hmm. So for the act of taking care of your of that area with the CO2 lift is going to bring attention and awareness to that, some type of focus. Because, you know, we've we, we we're we're very heady people um individ you know women are men on the other hand you know a breeze can blow and they're aroused <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. whereas we need to think have it in our brain so taking care of of our vulva in this way gives us an expectation of enjoyment later on and then of course we need to think about the benefits of sex and all of that and all of those things can turn us on but yes to answer your question the co2 levy has shown to improve desire um arousal and of course pleasure 
Mm -hmm. So would you recommend it uh, to use it in conjunction with other products such as lubricants and things like that? Yeah, you can. I mean, lubricants are, as I said, something that you do, you know, whenever you're going to have sex or as you mentioned, you know, maintain lubricants. I think it's just a matter of keeping that area supple, you know, keeping it moisturized. Because even after I do the CO2 lift once a month to maintain, but when I shower, I use a we have a glow oil that I use to keep that area moisturized just on a regular daily when I, when I mm. do my, whenever I shower. So the lube is something that you can use. What I find the CO2 lift V does is help you not only to become more lubricated, but to stay lubricated. Okay. However, along with lubricant, you know, especially, I don't know what, if you're doing hours of sex. <laughs> I've got to tell you something about, um, we we're talking before we went on the call, you asked me about, the impacts of going vegan. I, I do not need lubricant at all. It's just like, I, I could donate. So <laughs> I mean, it's like so much, because I actually read in the uh, PETA website about that because of all the fruit and vegetables, it's actually making your blood flow, which that does imp imp uh, impact your genitals. Wow. Well. So it's kind of like, I've never, because I'm in my job, because I'm actually a sex toy designer and reviewer. So I have 800 toys and I get many companies trying to send lubricants to me. And I said, no, I don't need it. And also I read the ingredients and I'm just not convinced about a lot of the ingredients that are in lubricants, putting it into such a sensitive area and things that, are, you know, you don't know if the pH is right. And also when they're saying things, oh, this is strawberry flavor. Why would you want it to, <laughs> to smell of strawberry? You know, so it just feels very uh, um, synthetic, you know. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, I, as I shared with you, I changed to plant-based, hundred percent plant-based um, last year, uh -huh. last year was the last time I had any animal products. And uh, I definitely noticed uh, improvement just in how I feel in terms of that area. I've been enjoying the benefits of CO2 LV for some time now. And, uh, and so I can't say if it's more or what has, you know, if it's more lubrication because of my diet. Um, but that's an interesting take on that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you talked about the game changers. They have an interesting uh, erection um, erection experiment in there. But there's another um, another documentary on uh, docu series on uh, Netflix called "You Are What You Eat." I think it's called, and they take uh, twins and um, they they do this test. And they put one of them on omni healthy omnivore diet, another one on their healthy plant based diet, and they do this experiment like watching erotic movies like before and after and and the plant based ones just kind of went through the roof so so the yeah. response is kind of interesting because it didn't I mean if it's blood flow it kind of makes sense because it's all yeah if it's flowing better that was an interesting so. that was an interesting uh series I saw it myself in fact in uh, the improvement in their telomeres and their gut microbiome mm. so um it's we're doing a study too with the Mayo Clinic here in the United States on the CO2 living post a procedure, CO2 resurfacing, but they're also testing on skin microbiome and telomeres and how mm. CO2 lift can improve on that. So that will be an interesting thing result when, when we get that um, study completed. But yeah, I definitely, you know, it's all about lack of inflammation, right? It's Absolutely. all about reducing inflammation, improving blood flow. And that's really the key. And if we can do it in so many areas, of our life. My husband just bought, and I, I wish I knew the, the name of it. We just uh, bought another a tub that basically it releases oxygen, but it keeps it, it keeps it from being released. So it doesn't get the water. You, if you stay long in that water, your skin doesn't get pr uh, pruny. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the, the name of the thing, which he just ordered it. But again, it's about supporting oxygen and the benefits it can have for your skin. So um, definitely things that you eat, the things you put on your body, we need to be aware of what it is that we're doing because it affects, it affects the way our skin operates, which affects the way, you know, if we function. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I love um, turmeric. I told you as well, that's not a, a kind of nature's anti-inflammatory. It's, it's amazing. Turmeric. Yes. Um, so what challenges have you faced in bringing something like this into the, into the world it must be lots of red tape and legal things and um well it's i think the, in terms of that aspect it's a cosmeceutical we're not interested in going the pharmaceutical route so okay. it's a cosmeceutical that you know we do again we've done clinicals on it and physicians recommend it i mean we have physicians who recommend it for you know for just after giving birth you know for women i've had 
some great stories about women who, in terms of their periods, who have had very heavy periods. And just by using it, and again, it's a blood flow, they're able to have lighter, just more comfortable periods, even getting pregnant. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, there's just last week, I, there was a, a woman who she had for eight years, she's tried to get pregnant. She's had two failed embryo transfers. And after using the CO2 lift, not only, and, and you talk about within the space of three months, that she's not only pregnant, but she is, she's maintained the pregnancy and she's going into her fifth month. So there are definitely... Um, we were a cosmeceutical. The challenge that I think that we face really it's with women, mm-hmm. our psychology about it. You know, you know, women at first, you know, we we did a soft launch back in 2019, and the, the conversation women didn't want to have it. You know, women were like, "Oh, I'm good down there." You know, I'm good, mm-hmm. um, and it makes you think about you know, just 26, 27 years ago. You know, you approach a man about ED. There was no such thing as erectile dysfunction. In fact, you talk to a man, oh, I can give you hard directions. And he's like, I'm good, you know, it, because mm. they weren't aware that things could get better. Mm. Well, I think the same situation today. Thankfully, more and more women are talking about it. It's like almost like we're in a new sexual revolution. And we've, as women, given ourselves permission to enjoy this very important area of life, because that's why we're all here. If it wasn't for sex, we wouldn't be all here. But I think for women to enjoy it and talk about it has empowered them to be able to see there are other ways that we can make this area of life enjoyable, more enjoyable. So that has been the challenge is just talking the conversation. In fact, just, I want to say back in 20, was it in 2019? I was doing a, it was on, uh, it was during breast cancer awareness month and it was a segment on Dallas today in Dallas. And I remember the host of the, the news station was telling me that I couldn't use the word vagina. Oh, wow. So I'm like, is it daytime TV? This, yes. Uh-huh. No, this changed because I've done last year I was in Vegas and we did a, a, a thing on live TV and we use the word comfortably, but just to show you how a few years, things have changed. Mm. And I asked the back then, I'm like, so how do I describe what, I'm, how do I talk about it? And she says, just use the word pelvic health. I was oh, like, wow. okay. You know what I'm saying? So things have changed, but so that was been our biggest challenge, but thankfully to people like yourself, Venus, who are having these conversations and more and more women like us are that things have changed in that respect. Definitely. Things definitely changed. I've been in this industry now for 15 years. It will be this year. And even sex toys, which is my area of expertise, um, I, I was I was in a hardware in a hardware store one day, just looking for a bikini trimmer, and I saw sex toys, and I was like, "Wow!" And I thought it was incredible to, that you could just go and buy, you know, a kettle, and then you've got a vibrator in the same place. And uh, that, you know, I just thought it was amazing because you're you're reaching an audience that you wouldn't have reached because a lot of people don't want to go into, let's say, a sex shop. It's kind of normalizing pleasure. And that's my my mission is to encourage people to prioritize pleasure because it's such an important part of life, you know. Definitely. Definitely. I agree with you. So I'm so glad that things are changing in that area. Mm-hmm. I think things are still kind of getting some, in some degree a bit more, a bit worse in terms of censorship. That's one reason in this podcast, I'm kind of branching out from the sexuality space because um, I'm kind of sick of <laughs> censorship. You know, it's just like on social media, everyone's writing sex, S-E-G-G-S, you know, yes. it's, it's incredible, you know, how people can advertise some very harmful things, but then um, something that's about pleasure is, some, is something so bad. And it's like, wow, it's it's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree. I agree. Well, mm-hmm. hopefully things will continue. I mean, I was on this, um, another show with, with a, and a doctor was on there and he was said something really interesting and maybe, and excuse me if I'm not saying it correctly, but he was saying that the word, the medical word for, for, I don't know if it was vagina or clitoris, but it was pedendum. Have you heard of that? Oh yeah. And that's like, I mean, shame. Yeah. Shame. Yes. Is it for the vagina or the clitoris? Uh, it's, um, I think it's just the, the vulva in general, because it's in, I, I speak, I speak Spanish as pudor. It means shame. So it comes from that. The root, oh, Latin, yes. I suppose. Yeah, yes. the door is so people, The medical, if that is where the root is. Yeah, and also you know, in Spanish, uh, embarazada is pregnant, so it means like embarrassed. Like, sure, yes. wow, this yes. is crazy. Mm-hmm. That is crazy. So yeah, so now we can kind of 
put some context behind women's feeling towards having these conversations, mm-hmm. you know, it's where it started from. So we're doing our best to normalize these conversations. And even in the conversations we have with our, our daughters, and I don't have daughters, I have two boys, but my nieces, I mean, you know, we kind of stop at ha- having your period and that's mm-hmm. it. And there's no other conversation about that area. Mm. We need to talk about what happens as we get, you know, in our different stages of life. And then, of course, you know, when eventually into menopause. Mm. Also pelvic floor, which is not enough information about that. When people go yes. into childbirth and yeah. postpartum issues. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big believer in that. I think um, I interviewed this woman who's a mummy blogger. and We just com- compared and contrasted um our experience of femininity because we had very different life experiences. So we, we and, and about gender roles and how they are influenced by, let's say, marriage uh, versus single life, um, ch- child freedom versus, versus motherhood. And something we talked about was actually the relationship with the vagina. Because I do think that I, I was on a retreat once with lots of women who were divorced and it was like their first Christmas without kids and a husband. And they just become so uh, detached from that area because that area was for you know, bringing children through and giving pleasure to the husband or maintenance sex, because otherwise he's going to, he's going to shag someone else, you know? So they were just so detached and I encouraged them to get this, um, satisfy this vibrator that sucks on the, uh, on the clitoris. And then that's just revolutionized them. But I can't imagine what it'd be like to be so detached from that area. And it's kind of almost at service to other people, like your partner and then your children are coming through that area. So you're getting poked and prodded by doctors all the time. So it can be very difficult. Mm-hmm. That, can, that can cause a lot of trauma, which is not really discussed. And then thinking of that area as being a pleasure source could can be quite complicated. Oh, definitely. Venus, you mentioned something. How would you compare the Satisfier with the Rose? Oh, they, they have, um, actually have the Satisfier Rose, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, They've brought a rose out, Satisfier. They, Oh, they did both. Oh my yeah, God. I, I, I think I prefer the one with the actual handle, to be honest. But this is this is the same brand that I work for Satisfy yes. among other people. But yeah, um, it's it's a nice uh it looks cute, but I think um the, yes. the handle's probably the, the classic Pro 2 is probably the best one. Really? Yeah. Okay. I don't know that. I mean, I have the rose right right yeah. here. <laughs> but I mean, I I, <laughs> um, I you can leave it out. No one knows what it is, really, you know, to a, like I mean, I can't. But I don't even really care if they do. But um, the thing is that I know this is not a conversation on sex toys, but uh, I, w- I just wanted to know that I didn't realize a satisfier was the same thing as a rose. I thought it was just I saw it online and it looks a little different in terms of what it's doing. But you would say you prefer that brand to the rose? Um, the rose is a, is a type of toy which there are many brands are bringing out this now. So oh, it has the same brands. technology. So it's it's still like got that air kind of stimulation in the, in the middle. So they yes. just vary on in the shapes of you know the petals or how deep they are. Um, but I think for me the classic one with the with the handle is probably my favorite, even though it doesn't look really? as nice. Okay, but, um, okay I, have to, I have to get that one then. But what's interesting <laughs> okay. about that is that that that's kind of grown just from word of mouth, like women talking about pleasure and sharing their pleasure stories with their, with their friends, which is a very, very empowering thing. It wasn't, it wasn't a big marketing campaign. So it's amazing how, how this has happened in since 2016, this, this came out, this type of technology. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it really is. It yeah. really is. You know, speaking of that um, area too, um, and I don't know if your audience has, is familiar with lichen sclerosis, but where that is something that in the United States, I think the, I think they said it was about 10% of women mm-hmm. who have who suffer with lichen sclerosis, but that number is they feel like it's underdiagnosed. And what In is that? More women, what is it? That's like a it's like a film that grows over the entrance of that's one way it can present itself, the entrance of the vagina. And um I, I'm gonna show you here what just a doctor who just called me just before we had this conversation. He's a you he's a, a cosmetic gynecologist, but if you can see here, oh, do you wow. see how that the entrance? But you can see underneath. Oh wow! It's, so that, sex is very painful there. So this here is ten treatments of the CO two lift. You see how? Oh wow! I know, right? So it's um, it's uh, another thing that prevents people from experiencing pleasure because there's a lot of pain in the, with 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 that condition. Wow, that's so interesting. 
Wow, incredible. Because I think when I saw um, that you were doing, you know, vaginal rejuvenation, what comes to mind is actual cosmetic surgery, which is something which is very kind of extreme. But what you're doing is just actually very, quite simple and uh, it's just like applying a gel. So it's very different. It's less it's not, yeah. not invasive or scary. Yeah. Oh, no, no. It's, and it's actually a very, very pleasant experience. I think that um, there is an aesthetic benefit improvement because you're talking mm. about skin. Often a lot of young people who wear yoga pants, they're very conscious of, you know, you know, how, how that area looks. So this tightens it, it makes it more plump. So it is an, there is an aesthetic benefit as well, but mm -hmm. it's definitely hard to, uh, directed more towards the functionality of that area. Okay, interesting. Okay, so a couple of quick questions for you. A question I ask all of my guests, which is, what is the book that changed your life? Do you like reading? <laughs> I do love reading. Mm -hmm. You know, I was telling you, and I this is it's a it's actually a novel. Mm -hmm. It had I think it had I read tons of books. I mean, now I'm reading. What am I reading now? I'm reading on the last quarter. Have you ever read that book? No, no. The last quarter. It's such. A, it's just in terms of we break up our lives into quarters, okay. and it's called. Let me see. The fourth quarter of your life with by okay. Alan Hunt. I'm also reading, I always read two books at a time and I'm reading Be Your Future Self Now. That's by Benjamin Hardy. So those are the books okay. I'm reading now. But I think, I really think the book that changed, that had a big impact on me is because I was so young when I read it. I was only 12 mm -hmm. and it was with your last name. And I mentioned to you, Gone with the Wind. Okay. Why did it have a big impact? It had a big impact on me because Scarlett O'Hara, that personality, she was so certain in what she did. You know, she was so, she was courageous. She went after what she wanted. She, she really never took no for an answer. She, that, I feel that that book had a big impact on me as a person, just her mm -hmm. character. And I don't know if you read the book, but even when she got into to the problem with, um with Ashley, you know, and when read and everyone thought she was, you know, this poor, and he pushed her out and says, and she put on the red dress. I don't know if you read the book, but mm -hmm. just, I love her personality and her story, and it actually had a big impact on my life. Like a fearless, fierce woman, that kind of girl. Yes, I, I, yeah. it, it, yes, and for mm -hmm. such a young, and I graduated from high school very early, so mm -hmm. I graduated at fifteen. But think about a 12, 11, 12 year old reading that book and just mm -hmm. feeling the whole thing, and I just, I feel like I've embodied her. <laughs> most of my life yeah. that's cool you know, I've never actually read it and I haven't seen the film either so I'll have to I'm going to look into it and because uh, I know it's a classic book, but it's, um... it's a classic the movie doesn't do the book justice okay the book, well, like the book because you can get into the mind of Scarlett Hara and okay. I just loved her loved her because I actually am um, in this podcast, I have a book review in every in every episode. I just I have a whole shelf of books um, from my from my guests. A lot of my guests are actually authors, so it's a it's, it's amazing. I, I love reading so much, um, so yes. I'll check that out. I'll put that in, add, add that to my list. And um, so, reading two books at the same time, I think that um, that can be. Do you, is it always different styles, or do you always do that? Or I always do it just because of my get my tensions but I just like I want another mm. just another conversation in my head so mm. I just switch sometimes it's totally two different types of books mm. in these two books that I'm reading it's it's more definitely on self-development you know the fourth quarter more is in terms of you know in my I'm on my, I'm in the third quarter of my life oh mm -hmm. my goodness you know and it just put things into perspective in terms of what you should be doing in each period of your life but really if you could set yourself up you know, if you like in any game, you can kill it in the first quarter and just kind of ace the whole way through. And some people in their last quarter have not really performed in the way or their life hasn't gone in the way they want. But you can actually win in the fourth quarter of your life, just like in so many games. But I just love that. And of course, in the Benjamin Hardy book, Be Your Future Self, No, it really goes on to the Mr. B story on YouTube. I don't know if you know much about him, but yeah. it's it's really thinking thinking down the line, six months down the line, a year down the line, two years, where is it that you want to be at that time? And then by one of, one of the things that gives a suggestion, just email yourself. If you can, you know, you can mm -hmm. schedule an email. So schedule an email for the end of the year. And here, Lana, this is, I'm so glad you made it December. 
remember, I'm sure this has happened and this has happened, all the things you want to happen, but it kind of brings all of it into your space just from you thinking about it in the future. So it's just some really good concepts. I really love, I I'm still reading it. Um, I should be finished by the end of this month, but yeah, I usually try to read um, two books a month. Cool. I just actually in my last episode of this podcast, I interviewed a 94 year old life coach. I, honestly, it was incredible. When I got off the call I and mean, I was crying because she just, she was just such an inspiring woman. She gave a TED talk at the age of 87 and her message is it's never too late. And she says like all of your coulda, woulda, shoulda do it now, you know? So, and she was someone who um, has, she's an addict to learning. She's all, she, I think she got her degree just after her children had grown up. She was uh, one of the first people to be qualified in NLP with Tony Robbins. So she was, mm. and she brought up three children. So it was just, uh, and she's still doing podcasts, you know? <laughs> so, wow. so it's just a real inspiration. And, and it's interesting how, you know, it's never too late. I think um, when we think about our careers and how long it's gone by, it's uh, so it's never too yeah. late for pleasure and all of that. So I guess it's yeah. aligned with what you're doing as well. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Another question I ask everyone is, what is the quote that you live by? Or or affirmation or well, philosophy? What do I live by? You know, one of my favorite, I have a couple, but I love this one, The Pain Ends. I've mm -hmm. had that for a long time. And I always, I say to myself, sometimes when you're going through things that are painful, not just mm -hmm. physical pain, I do it when I run. I haven't run a marathon in 10 years. I'm actually running a, a full um, this year. But when I'm even running and training, I just think pain ends. It's going to, I'm going to end this in X amount of time and I'm going to feel good about it. I mm -hmm. love that one. But also too, I think the one that I love too is, you know, you're, you are your own superpower. You know, every one of us have something that's unique that we bring to the table. So we, we can respect and honor each other, but we should never feel intimidated because we have a superpower that no one else has. And that's you, that's you being unique. So be as authentic and mm -hmm. as real as you can, understanding that that who that is is needed in the world. You can bring something to people and help people in a very unique way. And so show up in that way every time. I love it. It's a great message. So where can people find you? I have an Instagram. My personal is the Lana Kerr, which I love when people ask me questions through. I'm very good at responding to my DMs. But then we also CO2 Lift at mm -hmm. CO2 Lift. And uh, if you have any questions on that, you know, our team is also really great at responding. If you had any questions on sexual wellness or on skin or anything in that realm um we're we're, we're great to and we look forward to hearing from you guys okay and you have a website as well while you're selling that yes you have a website, co2lift.com and i'm going to send you also a link um there's a book that i love that i wrote it's called um the secret to the big o it's just more of helping you what can you do to increase pleasure in your life and um, I'm going to make sure that that link is you send you that link so you can have it. But our website is co2lift.com. Amazing. So Lana Kerr, thank you so much for joining us today on the Orgasmic Lifestyle Podcast. Thank you, Venus. The book I'm reading now is The Masculine in Relationship by G.S. Youngblood. And G.S. Youngblood is a masculinity coach and he's also a future guest. So in a few weeks, we will have him on here. And I'm so excited to share our interview because it was very thought provoking. I'm really interested in the topic of masculinity and in relationships, especially. So I'm, I wasn't the target uh, reader for this book. I just finished it today, actually. And I thought it was really good. I, I mean, as a Obviously, as a woman, I, th I thought, wow, um, this is really insightful. I think he's captured the feminine essence quite well. So let me read a little bit from the blurb for you. A modern blueprint for the relational, sexual and life leadership your partner craves. Wow. Men, this is simple. If your relationship feels flat, contentious or toxic, this book can help. If you want to feel more powerful and be less of a pleaser, nice guy, this book can help you. If your partner seems to criticize more, have less interest in sex, 
or act in ways that feel crazy to you, this book can help. Wow. So it talks about masculine leadership, which I think is a very hot topic. It's very alluring, the concept of masculine leadership. And I can understand that for many men in this current climate, post Me Too, it can be quite confusing. Um, People don't really know how to deal with women, I guess, because of um, women have, you know, obviously have more independence now. And there's the Me Too thing. So it's like, do you kind of, uh, how are you supposed to act with a woman? Because a lot of powerful women do still crave that stronger man, that stronger male energy. And that's something that I saw that was quite interesting in um, Indian Matchmaker, which is a really interesting uh, program about um, some Indian couples or uh, looking for or the Indian singles looking for their life partner. And what was interesting about that was that many of the women were in their late 30s, very powerful, very successful, and they were still looking for a man who was more successful, like stronger than them. And um, I think that's kind of true for a lot of women as well. I think um, there is that um, craving, I don't know if that's the correct word, for or longing for um, just to kind of rest your head on a strong man's chest and just let him take care of things, you know, in a um, I really do like the term masculine leadership, which is a very hot term. It reminds me of um, a recent experience that I had, which was um, not very, it, it wasn't um, a sexual experience at all, actually. It was just a business meeting. I had a business meeting with a guy in a um, in a part of Barcelona where I don't go very often. And I was thinking, because he wanted to have a, a meeting followed by lunch. And I was thinking, oh, I don't know where I can eat vegan in that area. And what was amazing about that is that when I got to the meeting, he said that he'd already found a Michelin star restaurant and he'd phone them up just to make sure that there were vegan dishes. And so that he said there were five. And I was like, wow, I didn't have to worry about it. It was kind of nice to have someone else take care of that for me. And that's exactly what is um, kind of nice about masculine leadership. I have a friend as well who's going out with this guy who he has her passport details so he can just book amazing trips away, obviously checking with her first about dates and stuff. But when it comes to those details about which hotel and um, flight seats, I mean, he's taking care of all of that. And that's kind of like very, very attractive in my opinion. doesn't mean that you can't do it. It's just kind of nice to outsource those things to someone else. I think it's it's very, very, very nice. And speaking about vaginas, because that's our topic of today, I wanted to read a little bit about um, from this book um, about vaginas. But before I go into that, this book is, um, it, I'm just going to go through very quickly what the contents are. So it starts off with the masculine feminine dance. And it talks about, you know, equality, the feminine and polarity, the masculine and the feminine, how they come together. And um, then it talks a lot of stuff about conflict resolution, which is very important, I think, in relationships, because it's inevitable that there are going to be some disagreements at some point. And there's so many tools in this book about how to communicate uh, in a way that creates connection, which I think is really exciting to think about that, because sometimes it's not about what someone says or how someone acts, it's about what's behind that. And, And any type of conflict is an opportunity for deeper connection, for sure. And then it talks, there is a chapter about sex, which is amazing, actually, sexual leadership, which is amazing. Um, but anyway, anyway, here's a little bit about the vagina. So I'm going to read this to you. You may choose to orally stimulate her. Most women will love it when you do. In fact, many women lament their male partner's lack of willingness and or skill in this area. Let me give you just a few basic tips in this arena. Many women have shame around their vagina. One of the most relaxing things a man can do for his woman is yoni worship, overtly savoring the sight, smell and taste. Personally, I've come to find the musky smell of my woman's yoni to be incredibly intoxicating. It's an earthy, primal scent, an experience akin to what musky colognes try to emulate. You will be amazed at the effect a little expressed appreciation can have on her. I couldn't agree more with that. That's actually a a very good tip. But of course, um, you can't really fake um, liking something or not. I think sometimes it's um, 
just about, you know, being present. And um, I think as well, when you are into a person, then all of their pheromones seem to be more attractive as well. Anyway, so that's a book if you are, you know, wanting to connect with a female partner. I think this is an, a really good book. And that is um, The Masculine in Relationship by G.S. Youngblood. And I cannot wait to share our interview with you, which will be in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned. Now it's time to slow things down as we prepare for this episode's guided affirmations meditation. It's probably not a good idea to listen to this while driving or operating machinery. Instead, take a break from whatever you're doing, get comfortable, take a deep breath, and enjoy. My vulva is beautiful. My vagina is a source of power and pleasure. I embrace my body's natural beauty and strength. I honor and respect my body's unique qualities. I feel confident and proud of my sexuality. I trust my body's wisdom and signals. My vagina is perfect just the way it is. My vulva is beautiful. My vagina is a source of power and pleasure. My vagina deserves love, care and appreciation. I celebrate my body's ability to give and receive pleasure. I am comfortable and confident in my intimate experiences. My body is worthy of admiration and respect. My vagina is perfect just the way it is. My vulva is beautiful. My vagina is a source of power and pleasure. I release any shame or negativity about my body. I am grateful for my body and all it does for me. I love and accept my vagina exactly as it is. I am empowered by my sexuality and sensuality. My vagina is perfect just the way it is. My vulva is beautiful. My vagina is a source of power and pleasure. I am at peace with my body and its functions. I radiate confidence and self-love. I am proud of my body and its unique qualities. I cherish and nurture my body with love and kindness. My vagina is perfect just the way it is. My vulva is beautiful. My vagina is a source of power and pleasure. Oh. 
I celebrate my body's beauty and sensuality. I trust my body to guide me in all aspects of life. I am proud of my body's ability to create and sustain life. I honor my body as a sacred vessel of pleasure and joy. My vagina is perfect just the way it is. Are you ready to embark on a journey of self-discovery and inner peace? Join us at the award-winning Yobaba Lounge in the French Pyrenees for a transformative, holistic self-love retreat from September 14th to the 19th. Immerse yourself in daily guided meditations, nature excursions, and powerful workshops designed to nurture your mind, body, and soul. Hosted by me, Venus O'Hara, this retreat is your chance to prioritize self-care, embrace your uniqueness, and build a foundation of self-love. Don't miss this opportunity to connect with like-minded individuals and elevate your life and enjoy a special welcome pack provided by Satisfier, the number one sexual wellness brand in the world. Visit yobarbalounge.com slash Venus for more information and to book your spot today. The link is also in the show notes below. That's yobarbalounge.com slash Venus. To find out more about me and my orgasmic lifestyle, visit venusohara.org or follow me on Instagram at instagram.com slash Venus O'Hara. Make sure to search for the Orgasmic Lifestyle Podcast by Venus O'Hara in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Thanks for listening, have an orgasmic week, and make sure every day is a climax.